How's it going everybody? This is Josh from Spawn Flyfish and I'm Pete and today we got something interesting for you. If you grew up in the Pacific Northwest like I did and you've fished conventionally for steelhead, you may know what this looks like. This looks like your side drifting eggs and we are going to take that concept and bring it into the fly world. We hope you all enjoy. I think this is going to be a little bit different, a little unique and Pete's going to create some egg greatness. So. Hope you enjoy. Thank you, and, and if you guys had fun watching this video, then please remember to hit like and subscribe at the end. Thank you very much. How's everybody doing today? This is Pete here at Spawn Fly Fish, and we're gonna tie up a little, a little fun pattern. Uh, this, as you can see here, if that doesn't look like some ooey gooey goodness, I'm not sure what does. And let's just get right into it, I guess. Um, it's got some red thread here. You can use whatever color you need. That's, that's some of the beauty of this fly. There are no hard fast rules at all. Um, I'm going to use a mixture of, of two different uh, glow bug yarns. And this one is, is the Peachy King. And there's this little bit more orange tone here in the Alaskan Row. And what I've done is I've stripped some of that from two different sections because I, I don't want the full diameter of those, those products together. And we're just going to tie those in together. But first, we want to get in some of this um, polar chenille. And this is just the regular red. And again, use whatever color you think is going to fit into your your. Um, local water is the best and, and catch fish for you. All right, here we got a little, little bit of a core there. Let's start there. And where that hook bend is, let's just go right to that and then down a wrap or two, if you will. Pull this back, tie it over itself, just to make sure nothing's going to move. And then we can trim that little tag end. Boom. All right, so this fly was inspired by a gentleman that came into the shop. His name is Will, and forgive me if I mispronounced it, but Kerasino. And he had a very similar looking fly, and I, I just couldn't help myself but to go, yep, I'm going to have to figure that one out and tie something very similar. And all right, now we've got that tied in. Trim off that little bit of tag and really secure this to the hook shank. All right. And now this is where the fun begins. So all I'm gonna do is twist this little rope of the egg yarn until it looks all right, which is completely objective at this point and I'm just going to kind of catch it and then bring it back and so you see it just make a, a soft loop there and then catch that with the thread and really cinch it down and where you put this well it's up to you again no hard rules or or anything on this once it's tied down I'm going to turn the hook I'm going to spin those two again get them nice and stuck together and then I'm going to come right up and make another loop and I'm going to tie that one down and so all you can see we're going to work our way around the hook shank as we move forward and just randomly decide well I think there should be an egg right there and I want one right there so we'll spin her up again double it over kind of Pinch it where you want it to be, right there. And of course, you are in control of the size of each uh, egg representation, if you will, on this as well. That right there. And I 
think we got room for maybe one more little one on top here. Yeah. I'm going to try to angle this one toward the hook point just a touch, like so. Like that right there. And if you've never worked with um, this, this material before, the, the glow bug yarn, it's very soft, uh, very, very malleable. So you should have no issues putting it exactly where you need it to be. Tie it down very securely. And let's get this out of here. And you can just pluck those loose fibers like so. And now we're going to come in with our polar chenille and just start getting it in between. Make a couple wraps behind everything and then from where you tied in your first egg there, just start working it in between and wrap it all the way up, making sure to get in between each little egg. And as you, as you wrap, just make sure those fibers are, are as much as possible pointing toward the back of the fly. There we go. One more in there. And let's call that good. It's already looking a little bit nasty, which is kind of what we want on this deal. And do this, and now we can cut that out. If that doesn't get you up in the morning, I don't know what will. Well, maybe a cup of coffee. All right, let's do a little whip finish here. And I'm going to skip the cement on this one just for the sake of the, the time for the video. But at this point, after you're done with your second whip finish is when you would go ahead and do 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 little dot of, of head cement of your choice. Let that dry and we'd be on to the next step. So oh, magically that's cured and we're ready for our next step. So here is 60 degree micro jig shank from Spawn, as well as a 7.5 millimeter football bead in silver. And we're going to pop that into the small hole first and slick it all the way to the front. And now I want this to ride hook point up since we're using a jig shake in the front. And so up through the bottom. And now when we fish this, not only will this articulation have some movement, but it'll keep that hook point up. So if, if this gets to the bottom, you're not gonna have to worry about snags, but chances are it, it'll get eaten before you even have that chance. All right, so let's pop this shank part into our vise and I do want some weighted wire not so much for the actual weight of it but just to secure that bead and hold it where I would like to keep it in place right right there at the top of that jig shank all right so let's, let's go for roughly 10 wraps of this 0.01 or yeah 0.020 non-lead wire here and Trying to be a little tricky on me. There we go. Not a lot of room to work with uh, on these micro shanks, but they're very strong and they're, they readily fit into almost any hook. So you're not gonna have an issue with a, a smaller hook eye on this micro shank. And once you've got that, just jam it all up on there and push that bead right up to the eye of that jig shank. And now we'll go trim the rear portion of that wire out, round it off with our dedicated scissors that we use only for wire. Cause I know everybody's got that second pair of scissors that they have just for that. All right. And if you're like me and you don't want to mess with this too much, there's my material clip. A good old clothespin will work just fine. All right. Get this thread started right behind the wire. I'm gonna go up and catch that arm and tie it down. And start getting some thread wraps on that weighted wire. We want this all secure, secure, secure because this fly is going to get chewed on.
Let me reattach my ever so fancy material clip here. There we go. And now we'll just repeat the same steps that we did back here for the hook portion. Let's get a different piece of Polish Neo. Let's get that hook will catch me. I think it's gonna catch me, but we have band-aids somewhere. So I don't want anyone at home to, to worry about it too much. <laughs> and voila. And so let's pick a couple more thin strands of our glow bug yarn. And glow bug yarn comes in a plethora of colors. So by all means, check out what's available and, and don't feel like you can only tie this in a couple different colors. You could you could drive yourself a little bit silly with all the color combos you could do. And right there makes me happy. Let's trim out this front tag end. Voila. Really want this tied down. All right. Same thing that we did like on the rear portion. We're just gonna start spinning this up until those colors kind of start mixing and, and it'll look like a two-toned egg in there. All that good stuff that you just, heck, I wanna eat it. Now let me get my thread back a little bit. All right, and the same deal. Just start making these little doubled over portions, fold it over itself, tie it down. Turn your hook and your vise, rotate, and spin her up again. Pick a different direction for that next egg and double it over. There's that. And as you can see, once I've got it tied down a couple times, I'll put a couple thread wraps in front of it. And this just ensures that None of this material is going to slip in any direction. Just going to stay where, where we put it. Kind of convenient. And that polar chenille is wanting its fair share of air time there. I don't blame it. All right. I want that one right there. Ooh, this is getting nasty. And by nasty, I mean good nasty. All right. And if we have room, oh, of course we got room. Let's tie up just one little small egg here in the bottom. You don't have to cram this, but I, I'm sure you guys have seen the cured eggs before, and you know, Looks kind of clumped, if you will. So that's that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna emulate that clump. And yes, I see that I've got a couple strands of that polar chenille tied in there, but we'll pretend it's hot sauce and a little extra flavor never hurt. All right. So same as before, start working that polar chenille, get a couple decent wraps where that connection is and then try to remember where you tied those eggs in and start working it in between them. Try not to decrease the size of your eggs there. And yep, I like that a lot. I'm gonna tie it off right there. Someone's already calling to see if they can order this fly, I guarantee. Let me trim that out. All right. So there's Josh answering our phone if you ever wondered how that process goes. Get rid of these. 
And from here, I just want to make a neat thread collar, secure all those materials down, and get ready for some toothy critters to enjoy a little breakfast here. So two whip finishes like normal. One, two, three, four, and five wraps per. Why? Because that's what I like. Oh, sorry, I moved the vise there a little bit. One, and voila. And once again, you're going to notice that I'm going to skip the head cement just for the, the sake of being timely in this video. But here we've got a nasty little cluster of eggs articulated. It looks cured. Once this is wet, all that polar chenille would just kind of suction itself to those eggs. And I'm talking some kind of tasty treat for those fish. So I hope you guys enjoy this nasty little fly. I know I do. I'm going to be tying a bunch more. And if you guys had fun watching along with us and tying, please remember to hit like and subscribe and go ahead and click that notification button too. So when we tie some more fun stuff like this, you, you'll be aware. Thanks everybody. Have a good day.